Inspired by the life of the savvy and ambitious Colombian businesswoman Griselda Blanco comes a new Netflix original limited series. Griselda tells the story of a devoted mother who, with her lethal blend of charm and relentless savagery, creates one of the most powerful cartels in history. Witness Sofia Vergara's captivating transformation into the godmother of the underworld. Griselda, now streaming only on Netflix. I'm Mo Rocca, and I'm excited to announce season four of my podcast, Mobituaries. I've got a whole new bunch of stories to share with you about the most fascinating people and things who are no longer with us. From famous figures who died on the very same day to the things I wish would die, like buffets, all that and much more. Listen to Mobituaries with Mo Rocca wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome to the Bare Naked ABCs, where we discuss every Bare Naked Lady song alphabetically from 7 to Y. And this week, we actually discuss a lady, not just the Bare Naked Ladies. We discuss Jane specifically. So lady, we don't know that for sure. I I don't want to speculate on that. No, okay. no, thank you. But we'll Jim, version of the song, she probably is. <laughs> and joining us tonight, if you haven't heard already, is Jeff. Thank you for joining us, Jeff. <laughs> and also joining us tonight, we have Stefan. Welcome, Stefan. Hello there. And uh, we don't have Aaron tonight, so I can't ask him. Aaron, what album is this off from? Well, it's clearly got lead vocals by Stephen Page. Uh, this one was a hard one to place for me. I don't think it's from Stunt. I don't think it's from Maroon. I would put money that it's not from Gordon. Uh, the closest feel I got, although it's a fairly different kind of song, is Alternative Girlfriend, so I'm going to guess maybe you should drive. Yeah? Nice. Yeah, you got it. Nicely nice. done, sir. It is off I'm getting better. favorite. Yeah, it's a good album. I mean, I like... That was also um, A, right? A is a good song. I like that one yes. a lot. Yes. And this is this is the opener for this album. I don't know if I would put it as an opener, but this is the opener. Yeah, it seems like an odd choice for an opener. That seems like a middle album track to me. <laughs> Not that that's a bad thing. No, at all. it just... It, it doesn't it's have a lot of... A mellow. It's, yeah, it's, it's a ballad, so, I mean... <laughs> interesting. So, Jeff, what album is this off from? Uh, this song is off my favorite Bare Naked Ladies album, Maybe You Should Drive. And what, what part of the album is it on? It is the opening track. Oh, okay. I was, I was worried then. So, Jeff, who wrote that song? Uh, this, this song is a Duffy Page song. It is. Um, so interesting enough, I mean, this is very much a Duffy page and, very and b &L, I think recognizes that because they have only played it three times since Steven left the band. Steven, however, has played it 116 times in concert since he's left the band. That doesn't surprise me at all. <laughs> <laughs> this is a Steven song. I can see how he would own this song. Mm -hmm. He should own this song. I mean, oh, too much right now. This is a fantastic song. And if oh, yeah. you heard it, here's a snippet. Sang her songs while she dyed my hair. Jane, divided, but I can't decide which side I'm on. <laughs> You're taking all of my lines tonight. What the hey? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have all my notes? Are you like reading through my notes? I've got all your research right here. <laughs> How did you get that? On the Google Drive. Oh, that would do it. You sent the wrong thing. You didn't send your parts to the song that you're recording. You sent all the... Okay. Well, then do you know Stephen Duffy's favorite line of uh, why this is his favorite song? Do I know what his favorite line is? On the, yep. Stephen Duffy? Stephen Duffy. 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 No, I don't know. I can speculate, but I do not know. His favorite line is, Jane doesn't think a man can ever be faithful. And he thinks that this is the greatest song that they ever wrote together. And it oh. doesn't surprise me, because let's be honest, 
Stephen Page songs tends to be tend to be about guys not being faithful. <laughs> but this time he is. It just the girl thinks that he's not. Going to be yes. He, he's not giving. He's not, she's not giving him the chance that's, to be shameful. That's true. So, do we want to talk about lyrics or music first? I I am ready to talk about anything with this song. I love this song. So, uh, yeah, me me too. So let's music is uh kind of kind of always gone first. All right, I think sure. I guess we can go with that. We don't have Aaron to, for the break. All right, so I don't have a full breakdown uh, due to life work balance being in disarray this week, but <laughs> it was recorded at about 127 beats per minute, and it is in the key of A major. Although for a while, I was thinking it might have been in E major. There are a lot of chords that straddle both keys. And I found that interesting, especially because of the lyric, I can't decide which side I'm on. I thought, maybe that's them being programmatic or self-aware. But uh, I like that. That was a nice little touch. I mean, it's a, like I said, it's a ballad. Let's discuss. It's a very simple song when it comes down to who's playing which instruments, except for a couple major things. First of all... They're playing acoustic instead of electric, which, if you listen to the Stephen Duffy version, we'll get to in a little bit, that is done in electric. I personally like Stephen Page's choice to go acoustic with that lead guitar. Except for one section, and we'll talk about later, there's one part of the Duffy version I actually do prefer. Okay, excellent. All right. Um, so, the other major big important change in this is sorry my, my screen keeps flipping around is andy andy on the hand, hammered dulcimer during leading into the chorus and leading out is beautiful i think his choice of what song what instrument to play on this song instead of just going with keys or xylophone he picks like the perfect instrument to make this i i can't put a word to what it is that he brings differently to the song but i just i could not hear it on either a xylophone or on a on a keyboard or a synth it and when he plays it in synth in, in on the live version with conan it's like nope not quite right there's it's not perfect it's definitely got music that i could listen to all day long without words or anything it's just music intertwined with the vocals is just really harmony and it's just beautiful i really like how the music all fits together um and it's easy listening um it's original creative and um definitely it's uh you know it's definitely professional level one of the things I think I like about the song is what you hear right off the bat, that lick at the very beginning. It goes throughout the whole song, but what a great intro to the song. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, the instrumentation on this song is gorgeous. Um, Stefan really nailed that home. I think... Um, I definitely agree with, with doing this acoustically. It's a beautiful song. Uh, and um, vocally, Steve sounds fantastic on this. Yep. Um, the harmonies are great. There's some really good playback stuff that will happen later. Um, one thing I love about this song is, um, let me pull up my lyrics just so I make sure I get this right. Uh, it's something they do that I think is kind of unique in the third chorus <laughs> uh, or the or the third you were going to say I this? go right ahead take that one uh, I actually like in the third verse when they do the the girl works at the store St. James still dazzled Dan by and, her smile while I shop there so the background singers sing the next line of the song still dazzled by her smile while I shop live the there. girl and works then, at the store sweet Jane St. Clair yeah they swap those I don't know why they made that choice but I absolutely love it I think that's brilliant and Stephen Duffy does it in his version as well so it's it's a part yeah. of the written song i don't yeah like you had said i don't know why they you choose don't hear that. that very often that's a, that was a really uh unique choice and I'm, i like it mm -hmm. a lot It 
it's it's <clears throat> interesting, and it's and they don't do it for the rest of the course because in the rest of the course it's an echo. It's just for those first right. two lines. Right. That is the only time they do it. And I think that's uh, um, a really really unique choice, but I think it sounds amazing. <laughs> yeah. It it's does. very. It's, un, it's unusual for the background vocals to give you the next line to begin right. with. I and mean, that doesn't happen very often. It's one of my favorite parts. By far, it's one of my favorite parts yeah. of the song. It's <clears throat> how it comes together. It's like everybody's working as a team, and it, it's just brilliant. You know, it works out. It almost well. takes you away from the fact that they throw in a little Beautiful. lyrical switch on you because the original line is uh, still dazzled by her smile while I shop there. Now we throw in the still dazzled by her smile while I shoplift there. And so you get that little twist there, too. It's a really neat little. Uh, technique that they do there. Well, and a lot of people have, have uh, when we were talking about, or when I was looking up meanings on songmeanings.com this week and, and looking <clears throat> up on other websites, people like have torn apart what that could possibly mean, that one word change. And I will totally agree with him. Steven doesn't randomly do that for no reason. I'm sure there's right. a reason behind it, but I just love that moment so much. I don't want to tear it apart. I want to just I love it. I researched that too. I was on song meetings too because I was curious about that. And I was, yeah, I was uh, interested to see what people had to say about and that. And some people went really dark mm -hmm. on, on what that one word yeah, change yeah, means. Huh? <laughs> he might, you know, it was creative. Maybe he thought of shoplifting. Maybe he has shoplifted. Well, they went Who so knows? dark as to like imply right. that he shoplifted because he know he was trying to get back at her because he was angry with her at this point in the song for all the rejection he'd faced. So therefore, he was getting back at her by shoplifting and putting her in a precarious position of either having to report him or watch him shop. I'm like, whoa, way overthinking. I and and I can kind but I can kind of see yes. that though because we have gone through two verses and choruses and even a bridge of him trying so hard to win her over and try and get her attention that um, the line isn't I'm dazzled by her smile while I shop there it's still dazzled by her smile so this is a progression this has come later yep. and I can see that like he's now vindictive yep. he doesn't care anymore <laughs> like I'm just gonna steal from your store if that gets your attention so be it. <laughs> <laughs> Like he's he's just kind of lost all his uh, um, his rationality at this point. He's just like I'm just I just want Jane so bad. <laughs> and no wonder she questions his faithfulness. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's shoplifting from her freaking <laughs> store. I I always thought it was such an innocent song. <laughs> I no, I really I I under estimated what that was and just thought it was Stephen Page being and Stephen Duffin being funny and like ha 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 do you get our little yeah. our little churn there like that's kind of funny right but yeah it does paint a very dark picture of where this relationship has gone that's, that's a Page Duffy thing though I mean to take a song that does that, it, that and it is I do think it's a sweet and innocent song and Jane is a great character like she's tired of being hurt she's tired of being ripped apart She's just tired of men becoming lovesick jerks and, and not being faithful. And so she, I don't even think she's vindictive towards this guy. I mean, she's even like, let's be friends. They do spend time together. And, uh, but he just can't get that into his head. So I think this is a Stephen Page character again, where he's so ticked off that nothing he's doing matters. He's not even seeing that, you know. Jane's doing her best here, so... Um, but he does get vindictive at the end. I still think it's a sweet and innocent song, which is a little... There's a little vindictiveness there on the part of the narrator. <laughs> and see, I never thought of it as vindictiveness until I read that review, because to me it was always just a funny little thing, and it was just a innocent, like, okay, some people shoplift. It's a small little thing, like he's taking some gum or something like that. Like, it, it's a small little like he's so comfortable with her now that he feels like he can just do that it's still wrong right. but he just like it's a comfortability thing but i see the darker side of that but it doesn't come through with the I music i kind of wish Allie was on tonight because i feel like she would bring a different viewpoint to this mm. than what we're saying too i think she would do that as well but yeah i always i always took it as him being a bit vindictive that he keeps being friend zoned you know and he, he can't accept that you know he can't accept that 
these these two are she sees him as a good friend and he wants more and, and i totally think he he totally cannot accept it i just never saw the right. darker side of it um <laughs> but i i love this unrequited love and, and the thing is is the song of the sound of the song is very soft and sweet and romantic but the unrequited love behind the song is is much different once again like Duffy and Paige like to do than what is being sounded through with the music. We've talked about that before. I mean, I think Aaron has said this and I've said it as well, and you've said it. I mean, a lot of us like those songs that don't sound quite like what they're saying. So they sound peppier or happier or um, more romantic than what the underlying message is. And I do think that most of the song falls along with that. Um, it is a guy who's in love. He loves this girl. And like, so much he's like trying everything to impress her um and for all her rightful reasons she just doesn't want to requite that um but yeah he does i do like i do feel like that last verse is a very <laughs> stephen page duffy verse where there's a little there's a little darkness to it like like how how am i even gonna steal from your store if it'll get your attention <laughs> like i don't know how long this happened after the letter to bridge because he wrote the letter um, saying life could be better by being together is what I cannot explain to her. Um, I don't know how much longer this happened. I feel like some time has uh, transpired from the letter till now, but he's still going to the store. He's still trying to get her attention. Well, and so I want to bring that up because the inter what what struck me as interesting about that line is the earlier in the song he says they're living together, not not as a couple. I've always taken that as in like roommates. And, and she wants roommates, he wants more couple type thing, but it, it's more like, at least in her version, in her view, is more of roommates type of relationship. But later on, he sends her a letter that should have gotten there yesterday. He doesn't know if she got it yesterday. Is he now no longer in this apartment with her at this point that he doesn't know... What, that she's gotten this letter and that he didn't just leave it on the table instead, he sent it through the mail. I think that's where you have to listen to the Duffy version which has a very different line. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about that line. I think that's that's a big switch Well, we'll there. Actually, we'll, we'll come back to that <laughs> line, but yeah. Um, yeah, we'll, why don't we come back that to the change, Duffy that version? That changes a lot of things if you listen to the original. Yeah, to, well, to the Duffy version, because they both wrote it together, and then they both right. recorded yes. it separately and released it about the same time. Um, so, original versus, like, who who changed it? There's a lot of changes, and we'll come to that. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, definitely there's a lot of changes between the two, and which one which one's original is an interesting thought. Good point. Um, mm. I, I always, once again, went really innocent with this song there are a lot of people that went really dark with this song and really dark on jane like i always thought my personal opinion with, with jane was that this was a girl who liked the narrator but wasn't could have possibly been romantically inclined toward him but didn't want to get into relationships because she doesn't trust money at this point because she's been burned before um but man, some people had some really dark takes on her. Like, this is a woman who's leading the narrator on. Um, she's a girl that loves being admired by men, but doesn't want to waste her time with any of them. I don't see I'm that. like, I've never yeah, seen I that. I can't see that in this. I never saw that. Yeah. Um, no. Some of these takes. I've always seen Jane as a character who's been hurt so many times that she just has trouble now committing. Because she doesn't want to be hurt again. Um, every man becomes a lovesick jerk. Uh, doesn't think a man could ever be faithful. She's been burned so many times. She just doesn't want to make that leap anymore, at least for now. Uh, that's why she thinks it's cooler if we just stay friends. Yeah. You know. And maybe she, she, she maybe she isn't agree. romantically inclined toward the narrator. Like maybe to her, <sighs> she has this really good compatibility, but she doesn't feel any romantic relations toward him. And there's a break. I agree with you. Well, yeah. there's a break your heart thing here again, too, which is um, Jane decided only coward stay will traitors run. I mean, break your heart is about someone who stays because he's a coward. He stays in a relationship that's 
he doesn't want to be in because he himself admits I'm a coward. I don't want to, I don't want to leave. I don't want to break your heart. Um, and also intermittently, we kind of talked about that. Um, there's definitely a trend here with Paige lyrics. And uh, I see that too. Like James decided only cowards stay traders run. Well, um, and a lot of females really identified with that line um, looking in and, and, and Pixie 86 put it the best, um, but they all seem to kind of identify with that line a little bit of, she said Jane, does, so that with that line, it refers to that men stay with her, not because they loved her, but because they were too insecure to be alone. So the cowards, and then right. the men that didn't were betraying. A lot of people were, were kind of like, were believing that this is a kind of, for a, um, common belief about males by females um, that leads women to want to go more after the traders and and the people who are uh, not as kind because at least they're not cowards and that belief that they have to be either cowards or traders and those are the only two choices makes them want right. to lead toward the traitors instead and, and the bad boys, so to speak. I found that yeah, very right, interesting the yeah. um, because, yeah, like the good guys are always like, hey, why won't you pick me? And if that's true, like Jane's point, like, well, only a coward would stay would lead to why someone would do that. <laughs> Is this implying that there's no real men in Canada? <laughs> I think it implies there's no real men anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, from you know, we'll at least, but... to... <laughs> yeah. Come on now, real man should be like, I'm not a coward. I'm no traitor. So <laughs> fuck it up, Jamie. <laughs> I'm you know? kind of, I'm very team Jane on this song. I should say, I'm very team Jane because I do feel like she is just looking for a man that wants her for her. Mm -hmm. um, every man becomes a lovesick jerk, or they're a coward. They stay because they don't want to leave, or they're a traitor. They're a cheat. That's what she's experienced. She's just looking for a guy that's going to be there for her. Um, but she's not quite ready to take that leap yet because she's been hurt so much. That's how I've always been. I've always been very team Jane on this song. Yeah. Um, you know, Which, it, it, being team Jane does not make you anti-narrator either because it's not right. like they're I'm opposing not. forces in this song. They do have different... Um, different <sighs> Uh, motives in this song, but they're not at odds against each other necessarily. Well, a rational person doesn't start shoplifting oh. because they don't get what they okay. want. Okay, once again, I, I took that a much more innocent type type way. So, like, I, I never yeah. took that as a as the vindictive line that other people yeah. have taken that to be. And it doesn't feel like that. It doesn't feel like the end of the song, like he is vindictive vindictive or even throughout the song like he's having that kind of anger toward her other than shoplifting other than the shoplifting other than shoplifting i, I still store. kind of feel that though because he has to throw in that little hint that there's there's no juliana next to my oven this is what i'm doing you brought me to this because you put me in the friend zone so i i do feel vindictiveness there but i can see if someone doesn't you know i don't want to take away from the sweet innocence of the song because i think it's a very sweet and innocent song what does that mean, no Juliana next to oh. heaven? Go, go ahead, Jeff. You, you want me to do it? Okay. So that's a, that's a very, yeah, it's a very topical reference. Um, it references uh, Juliana Hatfield and Evan. I can't think of his Dondo. last name. Uh, Dondo. Um, Juliana Hatfield is a um, – I can speak for her side. She's a, a Canadian musician and actually one of my favorites. And I absolutely love – Not She's Boston. Okay. She is American. Okay. Okay. Um, but she was an Boston? yeah. Well, she is Boston. Okay, she's a. But she was an indie rocker. Um, I no wonder. She's good. But yes, I mean, I know. Um, I don't. I haven't really followed her uh, since probably the early two thousands. But she put out a lot of uh, indie albums and absolutely amazing. Just an amazing artist. But they're referencing a uh, relationship she had with uh, Evan Ondo. It's an obvious. Which is interesting, because so okay. they were kind of seen as the quintessential alternative couple of, of the 90s. Um, and it's interesting, because even though they were in a relationship, 
they were never in a fully physical relationship, even though people questioned and wondered. They were each other's mentors. They were each other's... Um, muses. Muses, thank you. That's the word I was going for. Uh, they were each other's muses. And, they were each other's muses. And a lot of their music and a lot of their lyrics were inclined to each other. Also, people sometimes overread into the lyrics and, and things were not about each other. But it's interesting because later they they didn't end up together. They broke apart um, very amicably, and they are still extremely well. They're very, they're still very good friends, um, and they still write together. They still do tours together musically um, and sing together on stage. Um, but the interesting thing is, like a couple of years later, um, for Vox magazine. Um, Juliana was arguing about one of the one of the songs that had been put out there, uh, one of the albums that had been put out there. I think it was a Soul Asylum album, and saying that it wasn't very good. Um, and in saying so, um, the next like someone came out and like slashed at her and said, "Oh well, that, you know," she said something about how the new Soul Asylum album wasn't punk or that someone putting it down wasn't punk rock by to insult soul asylum um and so the other person came back and said oh well it's not what and it's punk rock to have se to give away your virginity to evan dondo um at which point she just literally wrote a lambasting article when uh, kind of tearing apart and i will put it into the notes because it is wonderful to see her just tear them apart um that is none of their business but when it comes down to it no she never did give her virginity to evan dondo and never had sex with him and it's none of their business but you know since people are wondering and it's none of their business no it never happened um <clears throat> it just never it wasn't like i didn't want to with him it was just it just never happened and so i think it's interesting that like here is this song that where stephen page is talking about a friend zone type of relationship and he references these two people unintentionally i think because obviously no one at that time knew and they were seen as this quintessential alternative love couple but the juliana was doing the uh jane to to evan at that point in time <laughs> in some way and and i have heard and you probably could uh uh, uh correct this because you've read i think all of stephen page's diaries at this point um <laughs> but i believe stephen page would like he had a crush on julian hatfield right I, i've read that he has this huge crush on her and and uh he uh actually thought that this name drop in the song would would draw attention to her you know she would actually pay attention to the song it was the shoplifting <laughs> This was the shoplifting of the song by name dropping <laughs> Julian Hatfield in the song. Yeah. <laughs> so I maybe he was interested in Evan. <laughs> <laughs> no, he did come out and say that he was trying to get Juliana Hatfield's attention by by putting her into the song. Ah, uh, is that uh, the reference to No Promises as Vegas Heaven? Is is that related to the Juliana Ooh. and Evan? Scenario. It's the line you, you ask an interesting question. Hold on one second. You know more about Juliana Hatfield than the Hatfield Three, uh, Jeff. Was that as vague as heaven a reference to Juliana and the Hatfield Three? That is a good question. It would have had to have been something that was out prior to 1994. Right, prior to uh, maybe you should drive. Love is heaven. That's 2011. Uh, there's a lot of lyrics with heaven in them, but it comes out much later than 1994. I'm going to make a guess that there's a possibility that that is a, a reference to G Juliana Hatfield or a song that she wrote or a song that Evan Dondo wrote. Right. My yeah. guess is more closely Juliana Hatfield, um, because once again, he was trying to get her attention, um, when writing this song, I can't. So he would reference something she did. Right. Yeah. Um, I can't find anything right now, but uh, does not mean that there isn't, because she is very prolific and has a lot of information that I... <laughs> that it would take me a long time to go through. But that's a great I, point, I, Stefan. I was just wondering, because I'm also curious uh, to see what your thoughts are on what it means. 
so the Vegas heaven is, I think, this this uh, push pull. And if it's not referencing a song specifically by Juliana, I think it's that push pull of like being vague, being distant, kind of keeping me at this distance from. And, and heaven is kind of this vague type of concept where where we don't know what it looks like or what it feels like, um, but and it's never been proved to exist, right? Um, so I think the Vegas heaven is probably more toward that concept, like that, that Jane is being very vague about their relationship and very distant with their relationship. And that's kind of what he's, he's kind of getting to. And also Juliana and Evan were very vague about their relationship at this point and refusing to tell people if they were in a relationship or not, or, or what that kind of defined itself as, which I think also goes back to what Steven's referencing. Although he says no Juliana to my Evan, which is, implies that there's a very romantic relationship there. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I, I kind of like the um, references to uh, biblical things uh, in this song, even kind of comparing her <laughs> with Jesus in the sense of bringing her frankincense and myrrh. Um, and it's kind of interesting <laughs> that he would worship her in that sort of way. And I believe that's what it's in reference to. Yeah, no, and and him saying that she that he worships her and the ground that she walks on, and I, I personally that's one of my favorite lines in the song. Um, I oh, yeah. love I love that play on words, but I also love the fact that she denies him, and she thought that I was making fun of her. Like she doesn't see it as him. Like yeah. I worship you. She's like, you're teasing me. That's rude. That's mean. What are you doing? Right. And I, I, I kind of I see it that way too because I've I've talked to um, a lot of uh, friends of mine that are that are women, and uh, being on the, the the you know going on uh, dating apps or going on you know online dating that kind of thing, and the guys that will go overboard on this stuff and and hopefully this does not become offensive I don't mean it that way, but there are a lot of players out there that will play the same cards. The dogs in the picture, the cats in the picture, the niece or the nephews in the picture. Um, you know, they'll they'll show up with the flowers and everything. There are some really nasty guys that don't have the right intentions that can play all those cards um, to win someone over, and a lot of times it works. And then people end up getting hurt mm -hmm. because they they see that that thing, and it's not true. It's not real. Right. I feel like <laughs> Jane sees that. She's she's seen all the gifts. She's seen all the presents. She's seen all the tricks. And, you know, you, you showering me with these gifts, like I'm a saint or I'm a, your savior or, you know, I should be worshipped. I feel like she sees through that because she's been through this. Before. But I'm going to change that. I don't think it's she sees through that. I think she misperceives what that is, because I think that this person honestly does. have. I mean, he says that he, she makes him feel like he's 14 again. He's not just like trying to win her affections for no reason. Um, I don't feel like this is a, 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 a bad narrator, an asshole narrator that is, is trying to gain her affections. He's honestly, truly trying to please right. her and make her happy. I'm not, saying she, um, I'm not saying he's not. I'm just saying that, that in, she's probably seen this before from guys that yes. were. So even though this guy's intentions um, for the most part are good, um, you know, I don't, but see, here's my thing. I do take this song darker because I don't know if this guy's, this, this intentions necessarily are as good as we give him. Hmm. Jane doesn't think a man could ever be faithful. She isn't giving me the chance to be shameful. That's a weird line for someone that's perfectly innocent. To me. I see what you're saying. She isn't giving me the chance to be shameful. <laughs> I see what you, you're uh, saying. The perfectly innocent guy wouldn't say that. <laughs> I, I I see what you're saying, but I I feel like it comes down to two things. <clears throat> I think one, and this is me making that innocent uh, approach, which is weird for me to not go dark. Um, but I really see it as that innocent of like she's not giving me a chance to make mistakes. She's not giving me a chance to not be perfect but still love her. Um, and then he had to find a rhyme for faithful and, and what was shameful. Um, I, I just, that's where I feel like he's going. Oh, oh, oh. I, you have almost never said anything I disagree with, but that is the first time I disagree vehemently with something you okay. said. Like, I don't think that that was just a random rhyme. That wasn't just to find a rhyme. 
I, I think this song is way more deliberate than that. Because if you look at the rhyme scheme throughout the song, it is positively brilliant. Um, the first chorus, the double rhyme, Jane divided, but I can't decide which side I'm on. Jane decided, rhyme, divided, decided, only cowards stay while traitors run. There's a double rhyme there. The third verse has the uh, double rhyme there too. Um, Jane's desired by the people at her school well, at work. Jane is tired. So there's a there's very deliberate rhyming in this song. And I do feel that that line is a little bit more cringy um, as far as the narrator than what it lets off. Well, and see, I think that first that first part that you were just talking about, I think is more him putting a spotlight on Jane and her thought processes than more so than him. That's him saying like Jane's divided and I can't decide which side I'm on or she can't decide which side I'm on. The two choices are that I'm either a coward or I'm, I'm a traitor and she's decided that those are the two options. There's no other options in this world. I don't agree with that, but that's what that's what she keeps dichotomizing right. this world into. And I think that's what he's trying to say there is like she's she's dichotomized this world into something to decide which which category I'm in, but I'm not in either. And I will agree with you that he's I, very deliberate with his rights. I can't quite, I can't cut and quite see the guy as innocently as maybe you can on this. Um, like he even wrote the letter. Life couldn't be better by being together. Um, I think in his mind, like he's just doing everything he can. But there's a there's a still a bit of a shakiness there on him. And when he doesn't get his way. Um, he's going the extreme. He's going to go into her <laughs> shop store, the store she shoplift. works in. She's going to, he's going to shoplift because he'll get attention. That's right. Uh, she'll get in trouble. Something will happen. At that point, he doesn't even care. So I don't think the guy is, in my view, as innocent as um, maybe the... Because that woman deserved it. <laughs> right. Dude, how could she friend zone me? I brought her presents. I know. I sang her songs. I, know. I was a good guy. You know, the whole thing, like, the good guy always goes, the people that always say, like, oh, women don't want good guys, and that all kind of thing, and you always say to yourself, when someone says that, are you, though? Are you the good guy? <laughs> but, um, I got gold at the pawn shop, like, finding frankincense <laughs> and myrrh. <laughs> <laughs> but he's still dazzled by her smile while he's shoplifting there. He's still enamored. He is. Yeah. So why would he be vindictive at that point if he's still yeah. dazzled? Because he's because he's he's to the point where whatever he wants, he's so in love or he's so um, uh, he's so enamored by her or so infatuated that, you know, he's not thinking rationally. He's not thinking long term. He's not thinking, what is this woman actually looking for in me? What has she been through and what is she looking for being me? What do I actually need to do besides just um stuff the arbitrary on the surface stuff um to prove myself to her uh like i feel like he 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 didn't you know he just didn't quite get it enough and so he did something uh extreme because of that i just can't so, go there a little bit of a shit i just I, I, you know i i have i i still have that very innocent you see, look you, with it you see all good in people. Yeah, you're you're seeing the song with rose colored glasses, Tracy, well, and that's fine. I mean, I, I mean, I like yeah. that. <laughs> I don't know. There's just something. There's something <laughs> sweet and innocent about the way this song feels, even at the end. I think, um, and and the fact that the chorus doesn't reflect the same thing that he's saying might. Show, says to me again, it might just be having him having fun. Because the, the chorus, the Greek chorus behind him that is echoing his lines before he says it, um, is they say, still dazzled by her smile while I shop there. Yeah. So yeah. that's an interesting choice as well. They're not changing their, their lines for whatever reason. The background, yeah, the background vocals don't change. Yeah, that makes sense. So, that's true. <laughs> He needs to get out more. There's, <laughs> There's way more fish in the sea. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's nuts. Just don't, uh, so. you know, don't don't set your anchor down on Jane. She's she's not having it. She's not not her thing. No, you're not her thing. Just deal with did, it. Did you guys have a um, 
a movie that you thought of when you heard this song? I, I personally thought this song should have been part of a soundtrack. Um, I thought that it was... Bull no. for old <laughs> Con, Con Air. No. How, oh God, yeah. how is this song not the one. lead... Like, Long-haired Nicholas Cage. I don't get how this song was not the lead song, the, the titular song about something about Mary, and they didn't change the name to Jane. Other than they wrote that movie based on this song, and we're like, oh no, that's hitting too close to home. we got to change the name and not include the song at all, because that's where we got this whole idea. Because something about Mary is... Because Mary has two syllables and Jane has one, and you would throw off the balance No, of because something about Mary is the we movie the epitome of this song. Sinclair. Well, yeah, but just try it. Just, let's just like humor me. The girl we're at the store, sweet Mary St. Clair. Well, no, 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 but why would they, I think they changed, I think they changed something about Mary. I, I think originally it was based on this song, and they're like, something about Jane. Yeah, and they're like, no, we can't, We. it's too close. They're gonna, they're totally gonna know that that's what this, that was where we picked up this song. I see. It really, I mean, this, there is not a closer song to a movie unintentionally, I don't believe. I mean, you're going to yell at me, but I've never seen There's Something About Mary. Oh. I don't see the reference, uh, but that's I've fine. never seen that movie, actually. I don't know how you... I don't see how catching no. your um, beans and franks into a zipper relates to I mean, this song at all. Tracy so, picking his head like it's the superior... He's, he's one. determined to prove this point, that this song is clearly the inspiration for There's Something About Mary. Yes. Okay, so here's the premise. A man gets a chance to meet up with his dream girl from high school, even though his date with her back then was a complete disaster. I, I think that's a horrible sum summarizing of what this movie is. So here's a guy who has idolized someone he's known since high school that everyone is infatuated with. Every male that comes in contact with her becomes infatuated with and wants to become her boyfriend. Um, and she can't see any of them as anything other than bad choices. Does that not sound like the epitome of this song? Yeah, but it also sounds like the conversation I've had with every female friend I have in their 30s. <laughs> okay, but this movie came out... There are no good men out there. There are no good men. <laughs> like, that's, like how many conversations have you had with, with um, you know, women in their 30s and 40s that say that? There are no good men out okay, there. Okay, but... <laughs> there's, there's something about Mary came out four years after this was this was made after the song was released and I mean you, I just that's about how long it would take to write and produce and film and put out a movie I don't know I just I have a feeling I don't know I just feel like that it, it's you might be you might be right I might be crazy you may be right <laughs> I may be crazy. Oh, but it just be may be. Oh, just get me started on Billy Joel. I should start my own Billy Joel. Podcast. Where is Phoenixville? Ladies and gentlemen, coming soon, the Billy Joel a a ABCs. So the other thing I wanted to ask you guys is, do you know where this song came from? The head of Stephen and Duffy Stephen and Page. Stephen yeah. Page. Yes. What was their inspiration for this song? An intersection? What? Jane St. Clair? A crossroads. I mean, it was a crossroads between, uh, what was it? Wrong with James you, Street and St. Clair Avenue. That is where they got the name. That is where they got the yes. name. However, this was actually from the six months that Duffy was living with Stephen Page in Canada in his home while they were doing the writing. Um, Duffy walked into a health food store to Stephen White Stephen. Duffy walked into a health food store in Toronto and Ooh. saw someone that he had a crush on, never found out her name, and Steve? wrote this song about her, and then came up with the name Jane St. Clair in the way that you mentioned, Jeff, by looking on a Toronto map and seeing mm -hmm. the intersection and saying that must be the most beautiful place in the world. Because he was embarrassed because it was... Actually, Stephen, he was infatuated with, 
It's quite so simple. So in that, in that you know? living arrangement, which of... one dried the other's hair and which one sang songs? <laughs> now, you don't want to know. Now I'm curious. Like, was, don't was Duffy know. just over Stephen Page's head just drying and Page was, like, singing If I yeah. Had a Million Dollars? And, it was... Ba-da, 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 ba. <laughs> Was that the McDonald's theme song? <laughs> ba, 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 ba. <laughs> That's coming up, actually. The McDonald's <laughs> song is coming up. <laughs> so, so there is a trouble with Tracy with this with this song. There is. Is there? Yep. And what is really? it? What is it, Tracy? Okay. Is, the, fa- the, fa- the guy is just too good stuff. for you? He's too nice? No. He's just too yeah. awesome? Oh, and the song and is pure. too good. I like the song too much. <laughs> What the fuck is up with this video? Poop mouth. <laughs> there is no way you're keeping that word in here. Captain America, watch your language. Your kids might listen to this. Maybe I don't know, but what you sw- you I swear you don't swear. A couple. That's that's that. You're messing with the dynamic right a now. A couple of weeks ahead. ago, we discussed it's all been done and discussed what a horrible video that one was. This one is a bigger train wreck than that. I what? Yeah. What is the story that he's trying to tell with this video? The other one was just a bad story. I I don't even know what the story is on this one. But you're trying to make sense of a video. Do you realize that no video actually makes sense to any? That's other not songs? true. <laughs> there are some very good songs with video uh, videos that songs with videos that make sense. Pinch me. God, I hope so. You can God, I hope so. One hand. <laughs> Because I'm making one, one right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I meant like professional <laughs> artists. <laughs> I just sold an album the other day off my Bandcamp page, Punk. That makes me a professional. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, but I did you guys see the video for this song? I, I, you know what? Actually, I'm wondering if I did now. So, do can we? So wait, wait. References Go ahead. Good I want you to take. I'm going to send it to you. Hold on. I watched it. I watched it. Yeah, they had a reference to Jane Goodall. In Is that there, what that monkey was uh, about? With the gorilla. Because she looked at. It's not a monkey. It's Jane gorilla. Goodall watches chimps, not gorillas. Yeah. Diane, Diane well, Fossey. He was a Diane Fossey. They, you you know what? Trying to find a chimpanzee suit is a lot harder than finding a gorilla. <laughs> Just so you know. <laughs> and images of chimpanzees are probably copyrighted. So I don't know. They wrote a whole movie, a whole other song called another another postcard that had tons of chimpanzees in it. Like. Okay, hang on. I pause for a second. My first question is, why does Stephen Page look like a '70s star in this video? Yes, that the mustache is definitely another thing that. That is yeah. what is. Yeah, that's already. I'm kind of disturbed. And, yes, the, and concerned with this. Yeah. All right, we'll continue now. How old is this song again? 1994, the year we graduated, oh sir. Oh, yeah, me too. Lord. Me too. Mm, what? Mm-mm. Did you stay back like four years? Nine, Jeff? Ninety-four, Jeff. Ninety-two is Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> is that how many albums you sold? <laughs> Shut I guess up. I'm trying to watch a video. <laughs> that does qualify you as a professional. <laughs> Technically, yes. <laughs> Oh, that's wonderful. Oh. Love you, by the way. <laughs> love you, too. We show the people we love. <laughs> this video is messed up, dude. Thank you! Yeah, What's up with the B&L guys just ascending from the water? I don't know. With their glasses on. And they're all wearing blue, with a blue background. What? Also, the weird monolith with the hole. What? It, it's a door. That they're looking... It's a window, but I... Why? A monolith with a door. With a window. <laughs> once, with a hole. once again, a yes. great mute song that is destroyed by a horrible video. It's a 90s video, man. I mean, what it is do you that. Expect? Yes. I mean, it's very I mean, come on. REM. Did Stephen Page just single handedly pull a salmon out of the river and give it to her? No, that's the sure that's the lead of the song that does that for some okay. reason. Okay. Right. 
literally in the song, pulls a salmon like a out salmon and being pulled out of her leg. All right, let's yeah, and presents it to her as a gift, and not even at the point where they're talking about frankincense and myrrh. It's it's some random other point in the song that they decide to do. I could get it if they did it at that point in the song, like, oh, we're playing on the fact that he did this thing earlier and said this. It doesn't make sense there. I do like that the gorilla actually beats in time. That was pretty good. <laughs> that made me chuckle. <laughs> but from a guy who's been in LA, and I've been on the set of a number of different music videos, it has nothing to do with the music usually. I've it seen has enough. Everything to do with creativity <laughs> and being wacky and weird and trying to get. Well, it's true. To talk about it, but at least it's like it's got to go on MTV. So there, there is truth there. I mean, that's videos are supposed to represent like a different art form. They're artists, yeah. you know. Well, yes, but can at least. It tell a story. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, right. I, I want, I want a video that maybe it tells a different story, but it at least tells a story. <laughs> yeah, there is a point to whatever it is. Like she falls, he fall, she pushes him, or he falls over a fountain while she's in a bee suit, and then she just walks away from him. Yes, this was uh, this was a director that was. Uh exercising some artistic license to make something that was artistically pleasing. He was, so yeah, the, the trouble with Tracy is that video. That that <clears throat> like that should just disappear into a hole and never exist ever again. <laughs> I mean, that's just for the video. It's not for the song, yes. though. So is it really no, a valid no. trouble with Tracy? It's not really it valid. Can, well, yeah, it can be, because the, the, the video is part of the song's release, so I, I get that. Like, that is... If, if you have a great song and you love the song, it would be nice to have a great video to go along with the song. Mm -hmm. Same it's with all, nice song. all about it's from the 90s. None of them had oh, a I... video that went well. No, 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 no. Runaway Train, Soul Asylum. Great video. Take that back right now. Soul Asylum, <laughs> Runaway Train. Great video. Ford on Blondes, nope. What's Up. Great video. Take it back now. What's, what's up? <laughs> Okay. okay. Say, there were good videos. <laughs> Smells like Teen Spirit. Smells like Teen Spirit. Great video. Okay. Weird, but great. I was going to say, that one doesn't tell a story either. <laughs> and, but they don't have to tell a story. I mean, as long as they artistically feel like they match the. I, I, okay, so here's my problem with this video. I feel like they're trying to tell a story, but it is so muddled story. and it's... messed up that you can't even tell what the story is that he's trying to tell. And then it just comes off as a bunch of pictures that are flashing across the screen for no reason. That's called a motion picture, Tracy. It's usually when they have a series of pictures going across the screen in, in an order of events. In an order of edit. events! I'm, Thank you! Yes! I'm, a, I'm about to edit a video, so I'm taking notes <laughs> on everything you're saying. So, to tell a story... In, in okay. an order of events. In order of... Events mm. got it. All right, cool. That's but what was awesome. missing so, in this. Was <laughs> filming a video does not occur in order of events. So, so that weird that weird scene that I put in there with the squids playing accordions, probably not. Okay, all right, that's out. All right, cross that out. No squids playing. Accordions. No squids playing accordions, please. No, doesn't doesn't make. Yeah, because then you have cephalopodophilia. Which is a very real thing, and there's nothing wrong with that. And I really wish you would stop judging me. I meant to say incorporophilia, but that was... I really wish you would stop judging my, my fetish with octopi. It's, they are it's, strong. Getting, it's getting old. So why don't we <laughs> slip on... Oh. Why have one tentacle when you can have eight? Exactly. <laughs> Speaking oh, of numbers, let's slip <laughs> over to ratings. No, 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 no. We can't, we can't do numbers yet. We can't Why? Where did I miss? We gotta talk about. We gotta talk about Duffy. All right. So. Duffy. Oh yeah, we have not talked about about Tintin. Stephen Duffy did a version of this song, and it is oh. vastly mm -hmm. different. And I think if you listen to it, you'll see my side. Possibly, this is my challenge to the listeners. You'll see my side that the guy may not be quite as innocent as presented in the or, 
Because you will never like kept us to the dark side, Jeff. You will remember never. this. I'm this gone. was Stephen Duffy who who came up with this concept, and Stephen Duffy was like, "Okay, I uh, I have feelings toward this girl, um, and that's what this song is about." I I think that his take on it is a little less um, innocent than Stephen Page's version. It wasn't long before I slept. sang her song while she dyed my hair Yeah, divided, but I can't decide which side I'm on So let's, let's talk about the elephant in the room. The third line of Duffy's version is not, it wasn't long until I lived with her. His version is, it wasn't long until I slept Correct. with her. Ooh. Which is very different. So he, Party. Oh. Which is very different. I think that changes the tone really, of the song. I, I, I agree. Actually. Like it, it goes from being just roommates <laughs> to being like in a in a sexual relationship. So, well, if she doesn't trust men, then it can it makes sense that she would just have them as a um, you know, mm-hmm. as a buddy that right. would do that. With no, so he uh, had so no he attack. had that one night or that weekend or that week, and um, <clears throat> she was doing just being herself and just um, fulfilling a need, and he just can't get over that fact. He there's should, there should be more. It should have been more than this, and so he just can't see her side that I don't want to get committed. I think that's good. I also like the line that. Um, but she thinks it's cooler if mm-hmm. we just say friends. It's changed it the is. Duffy version to but but she thinks it's safer if we yep. just. Say and friends. He also changed the age for whatever reason. Yeah, it's thirteen. Yeah, it's thirteen instead of fourteen. Yeah, for whatever reason. Huh. Maybe legal mm-hmm. reasons. Now I love 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 the bridge on Duffy's version. I know it sounds so great and so amazing as an acoustic song. I think so. I wrote a letter. But there's something about that bridge that I do like. It just drives. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's where the anguish takes over. Mm-hmm. Like, I wrote the letter. Like, she should have got it yesterday. There's like there is in his version. It. Like, I feel like that's his breaking point. Like, he just cannot accept that this won't go further. And yeah. um, and I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm not putting this wrong. And no. I'm not being judgmental. But I feel like this is a guy that just really, really wants to be with this woman. For whatever reason, his intentions are great. That's cool. <laughs> But I just feel like at that point, he's reached up that point of the relationship where he just cannot accept it. And there's something about Duffy's version that the intensity levels up on that. And he's like... Um, that electric really brings I it into an angrier... Really, really, yeah, brings it up to the angry level, which is that... Um, like Sounds like I'd like his version better. <clears throat> yeah, he's crossed the point at that. that or I keep saying point. He's, he's crossed the threshold there. Yes. And... Um, he does change the characters. He uh, makes it the relationship between uh, Lawrence and Vivian. Which, which is, is, again, a very much darker relationship. Uh, very darker. That would be uh, Sir Lawrence Olivier and Vivian Lay. Um, uh, Vivian Lay was the uh, known for the star of Gone with the Wind and, and Sir Lawrence Olivier. Uh, huge, huge, huge Hamlet. actor, Shakespearean actor, Hamlet. Yeah, um, They had a very tumultuous relationship, um, which... You could argue doesn't fit the tone of the song, but um, well, his t- the tone of his song maybe like he's right. painting a very different relationship and feel with his choices, especially with that electric guitar, but with the the song changes as well. Right, and I, and I did read a little bit about. It. I mean, I've always been really fascinated with the life of Vivian Leigh. I've been a big Gone with the Wind fan, and and um, uh, um. Just, just an amazing career, and there was uh, a lot to be said about the fact that after that, I mean, her career kind of went stagnant, and he was exploding and got knighted. He wasn't a Sir Lawrence at the beginning of the, of the relationship. He got knighted. He was exploding. They did some movies together, um, but she actually went to, I believe, France to do a movie and had an affair, which she came back and, and admitted to him, um, really struggled with a lot of anxiety and bipolar disorder, and uh, apparently that was, um, you know, uh, a real strain on their relationship too. So it was a tough, tough, uh, 
uh, relationship between those two really amazing actress <laughs> actors and mm-hmm. um, it's it's a it's an interesting take to use them as your couple as opposed to Juliana and uh, Evan. Right. Well, and it takes it from a, the the feel of the song <laughs> is very eighties versus. I think that the the B and L version is a very '90s feel, yes, very yeah, alter, yeah. alt rock version. So again, they they reference an alt rock um, couple, but it's also a romantic alt rock couple. Whereas Vivian and Lawrence is romantic, but there's also a very dark side to that relationship. It started very romantic. I mean, it definitely had a very romantic start, a very passionate start. But yeah, yeah. It's... well, and there is one more change that we haven't mentioned at the at, end of the song. In the third <clears throat> chorus, yes, that he a weird flips. One. <clears throat> he flips work and school, so he says school and work, and and then change. He changes it to work and school, which then requires him to change the rhyme. The rhyme, yep. To lovesick fool, which it's interesting because I get the feeling like in Stephen Page's version, he's calling all these other people jerks. All these other people that she's assessing, he's he's the innocent one. There's nothing wrong with him. They're all jerks. Versus in in Stephen Duffy's version, they're lovesick fools, which is a very timid way of approaching like that. Pages, yeah, I like Paige's <clears throat> version better on that. I feel it's stronger. Well, I think that, that the narrator in Duffy's version is identifying himself with that group, right. which is why he goes simpler into it and, and much more timid into it of, well, they're just lovesick fools. Understand us. Versus I think Stephen Page's version is like, they're all jerks. I'm different. Not everyone might see it this way, but I I hear it as two very different songs. I feel like the tone and the direction of the narrator and who he is is very different in the mm. versions. Yeah. Yeah. If I didn't know that the two people had written it together, I would say that they are completely different versions of this song and completely different um, interpretations of the song. And by the way, if you want to hear a more in-depth literary analysis, there's another person that went into very in-depth literary analysis of this song, and I will be putting that into the appearances for this week, as well as a cover of this song by Twin Bandit, done, I think, in 2011. I could be wrong on the date. And it's a much more relaxed and uh, almost country-type version of this song, Someone went more in depth than us. Yes. Well, I, I think we went pretty in depth. They went I different than us. That. I believe Jane is about marijuana. <laughs> this is a song about drugs. She's Mary Jane. He's discussing his addiction. See something about Mary? I told you. <laughs> There you go. There's the connection. <laughs> they were like, there's something about Jane. This song is about nope. addiction. Oh, can't go with Jane. Mary, Mary, Mary Jane, thing. Mary, Mary, something about Mary. That'd be a great band name, is Jane's Addiction. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do some ratings. Let's simplify this down to some numbers. This song, because we really focused on that line, I think that was the one that, that caused us to, a little bit of a diversity in our opinion. So this is on a scale of zero to five shoplifters. Ooh. Ooh. And Stefan is yeah, going to go first. I'm yeah, sorry. I am. Oh, Jeff, you're so nice. I know. You know, I'm a giver, even though you, you know, made fun of my musical career. And I'm not bitter <laughs> it's at all. It's just beginning. <laughs> it's just beginning, Buttercup. You can do it. I have faith in you. You are unbelievably talented. You can do whatever you put your hands uh, to. How many albums have you put out, Sweetie Pumpkins? <laughs> One less than you. <laughs> Actually, t- <laughs> so, so zero. <laughs> oh, unless Jeff has sold more that he's just not telling me about. I actually have sold quite a few of the album, but we're not. We're gonna get into that. <laughs> okay then. All right, I sold then. more than one copy. Let's just say. It. <laughs> so whatever you've sold minus that amount, that's what I've, I've sold. <laughs> Stefan, how, how do you rank yeah. this song on a scale of zero to five shoplifters? <clears throat> it's just an awesome song. Lyrics, even the lyrics, I don't see them as too dark. I see them as, you know, as realistic. <laughs> you know, there's so many people, uh, men and women, that are doing the same thing, trying to gain the uh, attention and the affection of someone else who just isn't having it. 
So it's very relatable in a lot of ways. I love how Jane St. Clair, it rolls off the tongue. It's just beautiful. <clears throat> and the music that goes along with it is just spot on. It's just amazing. I, I could listen to this over and over and over again. And it's just great. I love it. I absolutely love it. For my ranking, I'm going to rank this sucker high. Oh, I've got to give a ranking, don't I? So well, will then... yes, so be good. <laughs> <laughs> Keep so going, good spreadsheet. <laughs> Done up again. All right, how many shoplifters? I like Duffy's so- lyrics better than Steven's, but with Steven, his harmony, his pitch, everything just nails it. I think it's... Uh, it's pretty much a perfect song to me. I'll say five. That's what? the highest I've ever ranked anything. We have found no, a five. Before, five. Right? Wow, yeah, he's got one, uh, two other fives on this yes. list. But that's... Yeah, you do have yet more. Yeah, we looked at the scale last week. That's that's a five that's on good. every album now that, he's, that you've covered. Jeff, what do you think? I love this song. Um, I'm a huge, huge fan of Maybe You Should Drive. It's my favorite piano album. I, I go back and forth as to whether or not I thought this should be the opener of the uh, mm-hmm. album, because I don't know if it feels like an album opener. I mean, I probably would have started it with A or Intermittently, but um, which are also great songs. Um, and I think Intermittently was a five for me, too. I love this song. It's a great song on what I think is a great album. And I know I've trash from the guy in this song but there are no villains in this one i mean it's like i think i like what stefan said it's relatable i mean i think a lot of us listening have been on both sides of this the person has been hurt so many times they don't want to commit they just want to push people away right now because they they did they're just not they don't feel like that this person's gonna do the same thing everyone else has done the other guy who's the nice guy or you know who's trying to 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 break that down or break down that barrier or um, just wants a relationship. Um, Go ahead. I should probably keep character and not watch what's going on there. Um, <clears throat> so I don't feel there's a villain here. I do think the guy kind of goes to an extreme at the end. I do take it that way, but not, I mean, you know, we've all done dumb things in love too. Everyone. I mean, not everyone, but a lot of us have done dumb things because of love um, in our lifetime. There are no villains here. It's a relatable song. It is gorgeous as hell. <laughs> Uh, the music, the the harmonies, the vocals, some of Steven's best vocals. The lines are fantastic. Um, I've talked about the rhyme scheme. I think it's great. Um, it's just a really good song. Um, is it quite a five for me? I don't know if I'd go quite that high, but it is high. Um, I got to give this one a 4.8 shot lifters. All right. 4.8. Remind, mm-hmm. remind me about that in about two minutes when my Google Sheets reloads. Um, and it's a four point eight shoplifters. Yeah, because everything. We re- give you lots of takes. Well, it's I mean, no, it's just ever, everything just re- just shut down on me. That's why I was like, oh <laughs> crap! It's a four point eight shoplifters. I'll keep doing takes for you. It's I, a I 4. don't point eight shoplifters. I don't need takes. I need my computer 4. to start working. Shoplifters. <laughs> Okay. I've been shooting a video for a week. <laughs> so, unfortunately, I'm trying to pull up my, my thoughts on the song. I'm just going to have to kind of just go with it while my computer decides to have its little tantrum. I love this song. Um, I may come back to re-rank this song down the road because I'm having a hard time to decide whether or not this is a perfect song. With that being said, the harmonies are absolutely beautiful. Um, as, as a person who um, can identify very closely with this song in some ways. Um, as a person who shoplifts. No. <laughs> Jeez, um, I, I think one of the things that kept coming to me um, as I listened to this song this week was one of my favorite things to do, as, as anyone who knows me knows, is karaoke. Unfortunately for everyone that's in the car with me, I must sing in the car. Um, and something that automatically will put it into the four levels immediately is if I have to sing the song when it comes on. Uh, which is something that happened throughout the week this week as I was listening to the song. I, I think the song is vague enough, but it's also just specific enough that it's relatable um, but it's also generalizable to everyone's experience in a lot of ways. Um, in, in reading the things on song meetings, 
so many people had different takes on the song, but they were all like, and this describes me. This is my take on this song, and this describes something I went through. This describes me in this song. And I think because it's just vague enough, people can, in some ways, identify with this song, but at the same time, it can be taken in multiple interpretations. Uh, I think that's what I love about this song all the same. It really pulls at my heartstrings, and I love it. Can I give it a five? At this time, no, but as I said before, I'm going to come back to this song down the road, and we will see if I decide that this song is actually higher than what I'm giving it. Um, so I'm going to give it a 4.85. Okay. Of course, he has to go hold another decimal point over. Wow. wow. Throwing everything. <clears throat> I don't think we can do that. I know. Uh, this- this changes everything, Tracy. I've been in the show what for almost a year, and you never told me we could do two decimal points. I've I've given three point seven fives and four point seven fives and four point one. Did he ever tell you that, that we could do that? No, I was never, no, I was he never told that. You've been here while I've done it. <laughs> messed up. No, in that, case, that is I, messed up. A five point one four eight five. <laughs> And no, I already got it in here that you have a 4.8. Um, what, what are your thoughts on this song? This, It's interesting. I, I mentioned this before on the show, how my musical tastes have kind of evolved. I wouldn't even say changed. They've evolved. They've grown. Because I still love the stuff that I loved when I was in high school. I still love, you know, like Soundgarden, Radiohead, Nine Inch Nails, and all that stuff. But I have come to appreciate so many more styles and so much more... Um, that I would have waved off when I was younger. And uh, this song, I don't think I would have hated it when I was younger, but I think I might have like been like, ah, you know, it's sentimental, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> um, interesting how time can change a man, because I really like this song. <laughs> um, it's, one of the, it's another one, we're continuing this uh, trend lately that we've had of me really appreciating songs because of the lyrical content. Um it's not a bad song musically by any stretch of the imagination, but I probably would have given it like a 4.2. It was definitely going to be a 4 because it's a solid song. Uh, but I was thinking like 4.2, maybe 4.3. But because of the lyrical content, I have to go a little higher. Um, so let's talk lyrics for a bit. And I, I, I'm really interested to hear what you have to say about this uh, because for me, personally, especially when I heard the line, only cowards stay while traitors run, <laughs> for me, based on my personal experience, that is an excellent representation of how it feels to be in a relationship with someone with borderline personality disorder. Uh, they create something called double binds, which are kind of like no-win scenarios, right? And no matter what you do, you're wrong. Uh, so imagine being in a relationship with someone who continually comes up with new Kobayashi Maru tests for you. You never feel comfortable. You can never let your guard down. Uh, that one really hit home with me. Also, I, I bring her gold and frankincense and myrrh. She thought I was making fun of her. Again, I know this feeling. People with BPD often intensely dislike themselves or go through periods where they do, and they feel like if someone loves them, there must be something wrong with them. Uh, so they are suspicious. The fact that you love them makes you suspicious. Um, my ex with BPD also kept us in like a weird relationship limbo after we more or less broke up officially. She wanted to stay a part of my life, but didn't want me to see anyone else. Eventually, she kind of cyber stalked the woman who is now my fiance uh, <laughs> and tried to like lie to her to break us up. And after that, I just cut off all contact. But I do look back on the good times we have with a certain amount of bittersweet, mistful well and melancholy. It's, it's interesting. Um, it, it's... It was a very intense few years in my life with a lot of really high highs, but when I look back, the low lows were way more prevalent. So, you know, <laughs> in, in the end, uh, I, I wish her well, and uh, I don't want any contact, but, like, I wish her well, but it was definitely the right move to, to just move on. But that, I get that kind of feeling, and I don't know, maybe I'm projecting here, but uh, I got that kind of feeling. It sounded very much like that kind of situation for me. Uh, did you pick up any of that, or...? Well, it's interesting. We each picked up, I think, slightly different mm. takes upon the song, um, depending upon, I think, our own past experience. I think this is one of those songs that is, 
it's specific enough that it hooks you, but it's general enough that it allows you to project your own thoughts and feelings onto the song and then connect with it and go, that's me. Yeah. Well, you know, it takes two to tango. And, you know, I, you know, I, I just spoke a little bit about my past relationship, but looking back, I have my own, uh, my own guilt to admit to as far as mistakes made. Um, and I learned a lot from it. I think I grew as a person and became much more understanding and patient as a person as well. But, um, yeah, that's interesting. I mean, not unusual for a Page song. I'm assuming he wrote it. Uh, we have an unreliable narrator. Uh, Paige, Paige Duffy. That continues my trend as loving Page Duffy songs the most. Yes, it does. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't surprise me, actually, I guess, in retrospect. That's cool. Uh, that's cool. Uh, I'll have to, you know, I'm gonna at the end of this, I have to make a kind of an analysis of all that. But they really seem to work well together. I would. I wonder if have they done anything with just the two of them outside of BNL after after he left? Yes, okay. actually, his first solo album after he left. I'm gonna have to look into that because that sounds yeah. awesome. It's not unusual for a Page song. We have an unreliable narrator. He admits to shoplifting at her store. Whether he started doing this after their relationship ended formally or not, it definitely indicates something. Uh, and one line in particular made me really kind of sad and, and, and made me think of something which I, from time to time, ponder. Uh, Jane is tired because every man becomes a lovesick jerk. This reminds me of the first woman I ever felt truly, deeply ass over tea kettle in love with uh she was canadian as it happens i was the cliche i had the canadian girlfriend um and i remember everyone showered her with affection and praise constantly and it was i was very young i was in college it was my first glimpse into how life is for women especially online and of course it's only gotten worse in the past 15 plus years it's it's something you know as a man you don't have to think about it but i you know becca from time to time will show me her private messages and she's got like if you're if you're a woman, you will just constantly be assaulted with people asking, "Hey, hey, can we have sex?" <laughs> it's ridiculous, That's and it's ridiculous. And it's yeah, and it's like, man, I don't even, I can't even comprehend how that must feel, and I feel really bad when I stop to think about it. Like I don't do that, and, and I'm I'm sure that a lot of people don't do that, but there are obviously guys out there who just constantly are like. It's, like, it's Make man up for all the what people who aren't doing yeah it. and it's like yeah and ex exactly it is it doesn't matter how many how many people out there who are just letting people be there will always be people and it, you know let's be honest here there will be guys who are just constantly badgering women and uh it, it's something that as a guy i don't have to think about because it, it never really happens to me it doesn't cross my mind but it's something that i try and stay mindful of because i know I, I, and when I think about it, like almost every woman I know has to go through this, I'm sure. And and it's a weird, it's a weird. It must be so tiring, and it must be so. Uh, I can't even imagine how that would just chip away at your self esteem day after day. Well, and to have to figure out like which ones are the jerks and which ones and who's are sincere. sincere, right? And, and the other thing it, it made me think of is like you know when I think about like sexual harassment and stuff like that. When I when I hear about the the devastation that it causes people with their self-confidence and like wondering how much of my success is due to me being talented and intelligent, how much is due to basically dudes wanting to get in my pants. Um, that to me is like, man, that must be devastating. I can't even, I can't even comprehend it. And I feel I, it's just, it's yeah. something that, um, you know, I try uh, as a, as a male <laughs> to, to be, you know, I don't, like I said, I don't do that. I don't badger people. Obviously I'm in a wonderful relationship with someone who I love. I'm not looking for anything else, but, um, you know, even if I weren't, that's not the kind, I never did that, and I, I, I don't understand that, uh, that kind of but it's mindset. But to understand the female perspective of... Well, that's the thing, is like, that. you know, it, well, okay, this is, this is going to seem like a weird analogy, but that same lady who I was with, who had BPD, and, uh, and I, I cared for and loved very much, she taught me many things, and one of the things she taught me was that women's clothing does not have real pockets i mean some of it does increasingly these days you see more but like the first time i ever saw fake pockets and that's the only way i can describe them is fake pockets i i, I she's like here here she gave me a pair of her pants she's like put your hand in the pocket and i did and it just stopped immediately like at the first knuckle i was like why would you even put them on there it's a lie so like i know that's a weird it's a weird analogy but like my point is that like as a man, I know 
that I take so much for granted. Uh, and, and like to me, I don't have to deal with so many things that women do, and, that, and that's a trivial example. But like something like that, where you're constantly being inundated with people who, and you have to question how sincere are they? Are they just you know, uh, do they just like me because they think I'm attractive? It's something that I, I try and keep in mind because I, I I really do want to be the best person I can be, and I want to try and make sure that I am understanding of where people are coming from. And it's something that because I'm not reminded of, because I don't have to deal with it on a daily basis, like I'm sure many, many women do, um, it, it's something that is just really important for me to try and remind myself of every now and then. So this is a, a, a great example of that where, you know, every man becomes a lovesick jerk. Uh, I just think of those memes where you see people like these, like, thirsty dudes messaging, private messaging someone on Facebook and be like, hey, 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 beautiful, hey, 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 what's up? And then they don't respond, so they're like, oh, F you, you know, stuff like that. I'm like, man, like, holy well, moly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Traitors yeah. and cowards. <laughs> well, that, so, the, so the interesting thing is I made a, a reference to BPD there, but there probably is a lot of truth <laughs> in that. You know what I mean? So, well, like, yeah. Yeah, I... I mean, it, it yeah. is the experience that someone with bipolar, with with borderline personality disorder, that the that both sides would would experience. On the other hand, it is also the a yeah. tru truism of living the female experience in yeah. some extent too, especially if I really, attacked. really would love to hear Michelle's thoughts on this song. Actually, I yeah. think that would be I would really love cool. To as well. um, but yeah, I mean, I. I can only relate to it through my own experience, you know, but I try and be empathetic and I try and be mindful and, and I try and be uh, uh, aware and sensitive to other people's experiences. So for me, very interesting song. I think it's a quality ballad regardless. Like, the music is solid. I don't think it's anything exceptional um, the way that I love, 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 like, alcohol or something like that, or just, like, the song just makes me want to jump up and, like, dance... And I'm not a dancer, and you've seen me dance. <laughs> so, you know, that's an exceptional song, just musically. Like, whether or not the lyrics are hilarious and funny and alcohol and like that, and they're very witty. Um, so, like, even without the lyrics, I would have given that one a five. Without the lyrics, I probably would have given Jane, like, like I said, a four, four, one, four, two. With the lyrics? Uh, yeah. Good for a I mean, I like, like ballads. Me, like, a four is a good ballad number. Yeah. But so the interest, so I was like, hmm, do I do a four point five? And I think I gave um, humor of the situation a four point five, and I like that song. I like Jane better, and I gotta give it a four point six. What, what was our rating system for this? How many shoplifters? Okay, I give Jane four point six shoplifters out of five, and I do so wholeheartedly. I think it's a really quality song. It's something that I would recommend to people. Again, it's a great example of the range that BNL have. Um, because, you know, they, it's not like they don't do ballads, but like, this is a really well done ballad with very thought provoking lyrics. I don't know. It's just, it's, it'd be a great example of rounding out like how, how broad their spectrum is. And it kind of surprised me because when I first heard like the intro with the gently strummed or arpeggiated uh, acoustic guitar, I was like, oh, okay. Like I'll probably like this one. Okay. But it's not going to be like one of my favorites. And then. You know, the first time I listen to a song, I'm very concentrated on the music. I almost don't listen to the lyrics. So, like, the first time through, I was like, ah, that's pretty good. And I listened to it again, and I started to, like, I pulled up the lyrics online, I started looking through it, and I was like, wow, you know, that's, that's really, really interesting. Um, and I just liked it more and more the more I listened to it. So this is one where, at first, I was like, oh, that's good, but I probably wouldn't seek it out. I'm, I'm definitely going to, like, this will be on my, my best of playlist, you know, that's why it's in the fours, and it's even a high four, so... Um, yeah, I can't put it up there with Brian Wilson, Conventioneers, Alcohol, The Flag, but it's almost, like, it's really, really solid. And again, knowing now that it's a, a Paige Duffy, that makes a lot of sense to me. Like, they are so good together. Um, I'm very curious about that album now, uh, <laughs> because I would love to hear that. So I'll probably seek that out. Maybe, um, maybe you and I can do a little yeah. follow-up when we finally wrap this whole thing up, if it ever happens. A um, yeah. couple of things I want to ask you about. Um, did you see the video? Um, I did. Well, I load up the video, and that's how I listened to it, but I tried not to watch it too much because I thought I might give away the album. I wasn't sure. So, yeah, I'm going to pull up the video while you talk. 
I'm seeing someone banging with Twizzlers on a computer keyboard or a mixer or something. <laughs> I'm yeah. seeing uh, day for night like, or the- dry for wet uh, underwater with, with smoke filmography and like interesting. Okay, so yeah, I this is why I didn't really want to watch it because I can see from the way Stephen Page looks that it definitely it's definitely it um, yeah, now, it's yeah. definitely and oh, even Ed. Not a great look for Steve. <laughs> I think he was still finding himself. I'm no. not one to judge. I'm not saying he looks bad. I'm just I, I think he really kind of came into being com- more comfortable in his skin later on. Ed's like a vampire, man. He doesn't age. <laughs> Yeah, I'm looking at this video now. I'm just playing it on mute. I have no idea what the heck is going on. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. Okay. (laughs) It kind of goes to this, like, girl and guy, but, like, it's not really telling the story of the song. No. (laughs) It's just, he's picking off her beauty mark? What is going on? (laughs) Okay. This is, yeah. There's, like, a monolith with the King Kong or, or the apes. It's, like, a 2001 reference. This is odd. And I, I, I'm a weirdo. I love weird things. Um, maybe if I watch it a few more times, it'll grow on me. But I can, I can see where you're coming from here. It's a little, if it, it's a little disjointed. There's a shot where like, she's having a picnic at the pool and she's got the glasses on. It kind of reminds me of Lolita, but she doesn't have heart shaped glasses. So if that, like, if that was a reference, that's kind of cool. I would think they would have gone for the heart shaped glasses at that point. I haven't, I haven't experienced the the video enough to really weigh in on it and criticize. Uh, yeah, I. <laughs> I think I like it more than the video for It's All Been Done. <laughs> Does she have webbed toes? This is weird. I mean, look, I like weird videos. I'm a, I'm a Radiohead fan, so uh, I, I like weird videos. But I don't know. This, yeah, I guess this one is a little disconnected. Not as disconnected as It's All Been Done, like we said. But uh, Well, again, I like the fact that this song tells a story, and they could yeah. have just done a video that at least parallels the story enough that it would have been interesting. Is this supposed to be like Adam and Eve? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't either. That's why I'm asking. <laughs> I, I mean, it, this is like a schizophrenic... It's like a fever dream. Depressive <laughs> fever dream. It really is. But I mean, a lot of videos in the 90s were, so I, I have to give it that. Why is she a beekeeper now? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Look... <laughs> not every, like I said, not every video has to tell a story, and, and, and I, I, I'm a fan of weird videos, videos that use kind of abstract uh, expressionism and stuff like that. But uh, I don't know. I, I like I said, I, I, I tried not to look at it too much while I was listening to it because I didn't want to get too many clues in. So maybe if I watch it again with the audio, it'll make a little more sense. Um, it's not my favorite video of theirs, though, I will say, yeah. So my other question is, did you listen to the Stephen Duffy version of this song? Because he put out his own... No. His own recording of this song. Interesting. I like it a lot. Uh, I did notice... The, there were a few tweaks. There was the uh, Lawrence and Vivian. Mm-hmm. Uh, the one that, I really, that really stood out to me, though, is instead of being... Um, she thinks it would be cooler if we just be friends. He said she thinks it would be safer if we just stay friends. Mm-hmm. Oh, the other one was, uh, it wasn't long before I lived with her. It wasn't long before I slept with her. Mm-hmm. So Well, and he changes the rhyme at the very end of the song as well. From Every man becomes a lovesick fool. Does lovesick he... jerk, lovesick fool. Oh, okay. So he changed work and the school, spool, the school work and work. School the, week be- the line before that to make that rhyme work. That's interesting. I like the honesty of before I slept with her and safer if we just be friends. But I also like the honesty and the self-effacingness of lovesick jerk over lovesick fool. So I can't say I favor one over the other. I like elements of both of them. Duffy, Duffy's older than Paige, is he? Is that uh, so? Oh yes, by about ten years. Okay, he that was makes the sense to me. Of Duran Duran. Duran Duran. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Because I feel like when you're still, Stephen Page was probably in his late twenties, early thirties when he wrote this. Um, I would say early twenties. Early twenties. Yeah. Yeah. So that that makes sense to me because when you're still in that period of your youth, you romanticize things more. You tend to idealize mm-hmm. things more. You put people on pedestals, and um, you don't. It's, it's not an intelligence thing. It's it's a an experience thing. Mm-hmm. You don't recognize patterns in other people or yourself yet. 
Right. And then when you get older, you've seen these things happen time and time again <laughs> to yourself, to other people. You start to recognize patterns. So, yeah, I, I would agree. Maybe not darker, but maybe like more jaded or cynical probably yes. in, in Stephen, Stephen Duffy's version and more honest with himself. <laughs> And I think it's a slightly more romanticized in the BNL version. But I like them both for different reasons. Well, do you have anything else that you want to add about this song? I feel like if you listen to this as a young person, but especially as a young man, I feel like if you listen to this in your late teens, early 20s, you will hear it one way. Mm. And then in your late 20s, early 30s, probably another way. And then now I'm <clears throat> approaching 40 and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing it another way. And, you know, it, it's one of the... One of the things I like about a lot of the BNL songs that I really like are that it's evocative enough to bring to mind particular imagery mm -hmm. or connect to personal experiences you may have had, but it's still um, obfuscated enough that it is it's not one person's story. It's like it's like a it's an archetype. Of, it's an archetype. Yes. You know, it's like a. It, it's a universal story that so many people, and that's and again, the nice thing is that as a woman, I feel like you could relate to this as well as as a man. But even though it's the narrator is a man, uh, I feel like a lot of it is because just because it's not from their perspective, I think this is probably a pretty relatable situation for a lot of women. Yeah. Um, so again, I, I really wish I could hear Michelle's thoughts on this. Maybe we can puster her. Maybe we could just send her, hey, 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 on Messenger until she responds. <laughs> I feel like there's only so far. I, I feel like I have come a long way as a human being uh, in, in my empathy and expanding my my horizons and being able to uh, to empathize with and and really understand the more you know the more experience I've had, um, uh, you know, just talking with women and, and understanding what they go through. Uh, this it gave me a much deeper understanding of this than I would have had if I listened to it as you know an 18 year old. Yeah, you know, kid or, or twenty year old college student. Um, so I would really love to hear from her just to get a woman's perspective on it. But uh, having said that, you know, the best I can do is you know I, I've led an interesting life and met a lot of interesting people and I, I've had a lot of interesting experiences and and from my experience, this definitely re can be related to a lot of kind of different periods in my life and and you know different people I know. Well, and, I'm going to put uh, this out there. I'm going to interrupt you. I'm going to put this out there. Yeah, please, so that please. We, we can put in. If you are a female listener of our program, which I know there are several of, uh, of you please, out there, please, please send yeah. us in a recording, or even if you don't feel comfortable with that, send us yeah, just a, a type us up something yeah. of of something that of your perspective of this song, because we really would love to have the female perspective. Too many dudes here. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> if this is dudes yeah. analyzing a song about a dude that was written by a dude <laughs> about a girl. <laughs> I'm a dude who thinks he's in, playing a dude who thinks he's another dude. But I recognize the limits of my understanding. I can never have that experience of living as a woman and dealing with that kind of situation. So I can empathize and I can put myself and imagine, but it's never going to be the same as someone who's lived that. So like, I would love, I'd be very interested to hear from, from a woman uh, if you want to write us or, you know, if we can, if we can get even a, even a quick uh, uh, sentence or two from Michelle. To pop yes. in, if you, you can read it, I would love that, Tracy. <laughs> my green, my green screen is wrinkly. I don't like it. It's bothering me. Anyway, as, as much as you guys have been kind of all over the place tonight, what I have really enjoyed our discussion tonight. Um, <laughs> we are straight it, as an arrow. We're that's. <laughs> I think it's on. just. Blinders I, on. We get to the point. We keep it on. We keep it on the rail. I was saying that we've had a great time tonight. I said that we were like doing a great job. I was gonna say that it's because we were talking about a specific person. You know, I, I, I like the. I, before this point, I liked the conversation that we were having. But you know what? Next week, I think we should take another song with a very specific name. What name is that, Tracy? Last Dance of Mary Jane. <laughs> No, not that one. No, that wrong band. Um, uh, Peggy Sue. No, and I. I Barbara Ann. Barbara Ann. No, Barbara not Barbara Ann. Ann. Help me wrong. Why is with all these girls' names? No, we're going with a boy's name. Um, uh, Jeremy. not Jeremy. And don't you dare say a boy named Sue, uh, or I'm gonna uh, come over there. I know. I was gonna say Billy. Don't be a hero. All right, I'm just gonna get to it. Okay, I think next week we should talk Billy about Jerome. Oh, well, I mean, I mean, I guess 
we should talk about a BNL song. That would make more sense. And no, and I, I don't know about you, Tracy. When I hear Jerome, all I can think about is that scene from the beginning of Ghostbusters where the librarian says, my uncle thought he was St. Jerome. <laughs> well, I wanted that you should talk about that. <laughs> oh, yeah? Because Jerome is about a ghost town. Really? Okay, well, that, how appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the city that people walked around and the walls fell? That was Jericho, but you know it's close. Isn't that when you jump? What you say when you jump off? That's like Geronimo. No, I believe it's one. I believe it's one night and Jerome makes a sound like <laughs> crumble. I think it's what we're. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, oh. he's got. I no, that's there. Samson. <laughs> Talking about no. oh, that's the name I say whenever I'm talking with you guys over and over again. That's a, that's a, that's a J name, J E. I mean, it's literally right there in the alphabet. Yeah, but we have to cover Jerome first alphabetically. Oh yeah, good point. Jehovah, <laughs> Frankincense and Myrrh comes before Jerome. <laughs> Boom, mic drop. They don't have any songs named Jehovah. <laughs> Oh. Oh. Well, they should. <laughs> well, maybe sure, on the next like, album they dude. will, but for now, yeah. real, real, real nudes, real nudes, real nudes. You're Back talking about song. Jehovah real and nudes. real nudes in the same sentence. <laughs> We're gonna. Can I get a witness? <laughs> Every line after this sends me to hell. So. Have a great week. <laughs> <laughs> At least it's warm there. Oh, <laughs> Versus where we are right now. And I'll probably be joining you. Hey, at least you have electricity <laughs> back, Stefan. Yes. Yes, I have electricity back, which is good. Where did oh, you get your electricity back? Lights, power. This is cool. Like lights and power. And yes. <laughs> Let there be light. That's that's a few weeks away. <laughs> This is what happens in states that don't have freak thunderstorm, freak snowstorms. I'm sorry. Um, you live in Pennsylvania. You really want to talk? <laughs> I'm not going to jump in. I'm not jumping in. Thanks. That was fun. Don't forget. No regrets. Except maybe one. I know scenes from that movie. I know the famous hair thing. Well, with there's the goo, yeah, you know. No, I mean it's about a character. <laughs> That's that's me. Hold on. Hello. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on one minute, guys. Yes, Mr. President. Yes. I. Of course, I'm a star. No, Mr. President, I can't come golfing this weekend. I'm sorry. Million dollars. <laughs> if I had a million dollars, that's a good one. I'll be right back. Well, uh, he's. I, I think Jeff's on the phone with I am, yeah. Yeah, I gotta go take this. I'm sorry. Yeah. I don't know which one. <laughs> the one. <laughs> I, I don't know if we have a president yet, actually. Do we have a president? I don't think we have a president. How come everybody left? Everybody left. This is ridiculous. And there's Tracy, who's pretending to be talking there and he's got us on mute and blah 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 he's like looking up something on his tablet and he thinks everything's cool but that's fine i mean jeff's off talking with the president probably the president's wife he's probably not you know, that i would not with that woman i'm sorry skipping the governor <laughs> she's the gov pretty soon tracy's going to figure out that he's on mute no, and he's not I'm not going to realize things. I only yeah, I took myself off mute. He took him off. Yeah. So anyway, Mr. President, just, just I can't uh, come I'm golfing this weekend. That's all I'm saying. So stop calling me. To celebrate joining Pantheon Podcasts, Rock Camp, the podcast, the official podcast of Rock and Roll Fantasy Camp, is giving away a guitar signed by Mike Portnoy of Dream Theater, Marty Friedman, formerly of Megadeth, and legendary shredder Zach Wild, plus our rock star counselors like Vinny Apice, Monty Pittman, and more. To enter to win, simply follow, rate, and review our podcast on your preferred platform, and that's all you have to do. For more information, go to rockcamp.com forward slash podcast. <laughs>